My name is Richard T. Scott. I'm a classical painter gone rogue. Now, I'm leaving the studio to search for artists who color outside the lines. I'll be your guide on this odyssey to answer the eternal question, what is art? The question, what is art, is simultaneously deeply superficial and superficially deep. It's deeply superficial because art is by definition non-functional. It isn't really necessary for our survival. It's about beauty, the surface, the style, or is it? It's superficially deep because through that surface there are hidden depths. So why has every culture for thousands of years in history made art? Why, when our ancestors were running from saber-toothed tigers and fighting for survival, why did they use valuable energy to do something so impractical? Art must serve a deep need in our consciousness to be so universal. And what I do today isn't really that different from those early cave painters. I smear dirt and oil onto a surface with bits of hair tied to the end of a stick. And yet, through such primitive technology, we can create new worlds. I grew up in Georgia in a working class family and went to the University of Georgia uh, to study painting and art history. Then I went to the New York Academy for my MFA and studied anatomy and aesthetic theory and of course the classical techniques of drawing and painting. After that I worked for Jeff Koons in Chelsea for a couple of years mixing paint and I had the great honor of being an apprentice to Odd Nerdrum for three years both in Norway and Paris. And Paris was really kind of where I got my start as a professional artist. I started showing with a the gallery there and struggled for a little bit and then things started to take off. When I came back to the States, I worked for the United States Mint for four years, designing coins and congressional medals. And while that was a tremendous amount of fun and very interesting, I felt the need to get back to really focusing on painting. And from then on, I've, I've really been integrating the historical research that I practiced in the coin design into the large-scale contemporary history paintings that I've been working on for the last 10 years. Currently, I'm exhibiting my work at a number of galleries, uh, Spalding Nick's Fine Art in Atlanta, Gallery Lloyd du Prince in uh, Biarritz in France, Stone Sparrow in New York City, and Bend Gallery in Denver. I define success as the ability to continue growing. One of the things that really compels me about the practice of art making is being able to tackle larger challenges, uh, bigger projects, more ambitious projects. And if I'm able to make enough money to fund those larger projects and continue growing, then I, I consider that successful. I don't need to be a millionaire. I mean, it would be great. I already have my work in four different museums in Europe and North America, so that was kind of a goal that I had accomplished early on. And now success for me is, it's about ambitious work and it's about really enjoying the community of all of the talented and incredible, incredible artists that I meet. The most important piece of advice that I'd give to an aspiring artist is to not let a single day pass without doing something towards your artistic goals. When I feel stuck, when I have painter's block, uh, there are a couple of things that I do to inspire myself to kind of get the juices flowing again. Part of that is, is really my daily routine. There's kind of this baseline that I need to be able to be present and creative and focused 
and that is having a healthy diet and exercising. I like to go running, meditating. That really helps to get my brain in the zone because a lot of painting is just about managing your own psychology. And beyond that, going to other artist studios and seeing the cool work that they're doing, especially going to museums, visiting who I consider my best friends, the old masters, you know, every single time it breaks through whatever block I'm facing and uh, always gives me far more ideas than I'm able to manage. My ideas are truly inspired by the world around me, by understanding how I fit into our society and uh, our larger historical context. I think a lot about history. I do a lot of historical research, and uh, I'm interested in drawing parallels between patterns and events that happened in history and what's happening today, both in America and, you know, abroad in our global society. And in many ways, I'm hoping that through understanding these patterns and through understanding human nature, we can not just get a sense of where we're going, but maybe we can choose to some degree where we're going. Maybe envision a future that is better than our present. You know, not some impossible utopia, but something that is simply better. I'm really excited about where my work is going now because for the first time, I feel like I'm integrating the historical references with this new kind of symbolic language. You know, I've been really investigating the tarot and I think that the tarot is a kind of mysterious and esoteric realm that a lot of people are fascinated with right now. But I think it gives us the ability to step outside of ourselves and perceive our reality and ourselves from a little bit of a different angle. And integrating that sort of surreal, magic realist kind of symbolism in with the historical paintings I've been doing before is really exciting because I really don't know what these are gonna look like. It'll be just as surprising to me as it is for everyone else. You know what I wish somebody had told me like 20 years ago? not to focus so much on competition. Competition is actually a distraction from what's important. Success as an artist and the path of an artist is a lot more about building relationships and building community. And I've found in my experience that the people I have the best relationships, even professional relationships with galleries and collectors and whatnot, is always with people that I could actually be friends with in real life and pretty much all of them I, I do count as my friends. And not only has that made our professional relationship go a lot more smoothly, but it's made the whole ride a lot more enjoyable.